Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Grinnell RPG as usual and I'm very happy that it's just to join me today as we prowl the streets of uh, whatever this is. It's It's got some warehouses, it's got some people and uh, it's got some uh, thieves as well. Although the lady that we met, the pirate that we met, she didn't really steal anything from us. She is intent on stealing something uh, and actually at the end of the day if she does manage it, then uh, it's probably going to be stealing from us, because it's the crown of, queen of kings. But, well, for right now, we're going to go back over here to this street. Hopefully not get ambushed in the night. You skulk down a narrow street lined by low warehouses. You catch the scent of grain as you pass one. Yeah, I went there already, so let's go through here. The broke broken buildings. Oh, I can go over there. You pick your way through broken buildings and through the wreckage of fallen homes. Uh, it seems the city once housed a lot more people than it does now. Perhaps its life is simply ebbing away. Across the ruins, you can make out the stalls and tents of a market. It is quiet for the night. The cold night lingers on. Let's go over here and see what the market is like in the early light of the day. You emerge from the ruins of a house into the edge of the market. Oh, this is the market. The market is shuttered up for the night. Uh, well, I'm gonna sleep, yes. Although, that's probably gonna... Uh, it never goes well. You find a stall to curl up underneath. <clears throat> Excuse me. You should be sheltered here, and hopefully out of sight. Laying down your pack, or laying your pack down, you try to rest under your habit despite the wind. You have eaten nothing today, but you have no provisions. Uh, only nine vials of bleamberry juice. Although the purple leaves you took from the herbalist may be edible. Uh, no, no. Let's close my eyes. You close your... Oh, there it is. You close your eyes and let your tiredness overtake you. You seem guarded here. You do not dream. You s you died again and found no new clues. <laughs> I died again, yeah. You are... Oh, I took... Uh, yeah, I took a little bit of damage, but I think it's a little bit better than, uh, than not sleeping at all. You are woken roughly by a stall owner kicking you out from under her stand. By the time you scramble away, you have sustained some bruising. Oh, there it is. You could he head in several directions from here. Oh, I... So, okay, so we got one, the west side, we got the north side, the east side and the arcway over there, and the south side over through here, that leads back over to this way, and I think we don't want to be there at all. What we want to do is actually, I could want to go right there first, try to see what this is all about, because I didn't go in there. And then maybe if I could go through here, these look like, I don't actually know what they would look like, like barracks maybe? Because these are, there's the, definitely something in the attic, uh, because these are of course the, the roof windows or sort of something like that. They have names, I just don't know the names. And then through here, I, if this is either a library or a temple of some sort, there's a sewer entrance or a well back there, which kind of looks like just a well. Uh, it's probably too big to be a sewer entrance. So let's go over through to the other side, the west side, and um, see what happens. An old beggar woman lunges against a well nearby, watching people come and go from market uh, from the market. A weather road leads west into a run-down area of the city. The air stirs a little, still cold, but fresh. So if I go through here, I might be able to get in there. We haven't been here, so... Oh, there's a dog. Let's get on. Let's get on! You walk west, out of the square, following a wide road. It passes by a large gate. A few clouds drift across the sky. Before you is a stone facade that stretches the length, the length of the street. Two men in heavy robes sit, in, uh, sit on the steps. I'm gonna greet them. You greet the two men, and one of them grins. Greetings, brother, one declares. Feel free to enter, but you will have to excuse, my uh, to excuse us. My companion and I are a little busy betting on the patterns of the crowds. Okay, well... I don't know what to say about that. You nod and make your way through the gate. Let's go. Oh! Huge map! You step into the yard of the monastery. It is much quieter here, and a sense of calm peace exudes from the buildings. Uh, the building, uh, as though protected from the evils of the citadel around. A short flight of steps leads further inside to a wide, busy hall. Nearby, a monk watches you with gentle interest. Okay, let's talk to the monk. Greetings, the monk says. You must be a novitiate. Noviate? 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 Noviate. Um, that is correct. Welcome to the fold, then. How are you settling in? Uh, well, it's a difficult life. <clears throat> That's a shame you find it so, he says. Is there anything in particular? Uh, well, the food is terrible. Well, that is true. You, you get used to it. Did you ever hear the tale of the silent monks? Um, uh, tell me. Well... Long ago, when the world was intact, there was a group of monks who took a vow of silence. They could only speak once a year. 
She smiles. Do you need assistance, Noviate? Noviate. Yeah, apparently that's not that wasn't a typo. That's just a word I don't know. Uh, so where can I get a meal? We all eat together in the hall. It will not be for some time, she says. You know how to move away. This guy is intact. Cries and shears come from inside the monastery building. Well, I guess we go in. You climb... Actually, is that an infinity sign? It is. Oh, there's people laughing. You climb the steps into the monastery building. This place seems rather busy for a monastery. Monks and citizens crowd around the long tables, and a commotion is coming from a crowd to one side. Wide doors lead deeper into the monastery itself. Small iron-lined windows dot the walls, allowing a little light. Okay, I can cast a spell, but I'm not really sure if that is a good idea here in the middle of all the people. Because if they don't like magic... Um... I don't know if they like magic or not, but it's, it, it might be weird for a monk to cast it, so I'm not going to do that. Let's look around the courtyard first. Most of Efe's monks are gambling or betting in one way or another. One stands on one leg, while another counts seconds. Opposite, two monks stand under a tree, guessing when a particular leaf will fall. Okay, so these are like betting monks sort of thing. I don't actually remember reading about them, but there we go. Along the far wall, um, surrounded by many spectators, is an intricate race course for rats. I am gonna cast a spell, of course, because I want to see what happens. I want to see what I can do. If I could call, if I can go with rap over here, that'd be an interesting thing. Maybe I could talk all languages. Let's see what happens. Pulling out the green wig, you put it on and, and cast a spell around you. A few obscure voices resolve themselves into the common tongue, but most are only cursing. Most people are gambling. Oh, hmm. Several monks uh, supervise the betting of various sorts, most, most are participating. So it's like a casino sort of thing. Okay, let's go with a tell. If I can cast it, of course, which I rarely can these days. It's really weird. Uh, and then we have the yap over here. That's the uh, talk to animals. That's probably not going to be needed. Oh, we got ourselves the how, probably not interesting. Let's go with a rap. That's what we did before. But we also have res, apparently, which I don't really understand why, but we have far. Let's go with the far. Let's see what happens. You sit cross legged and you see yourself laying down bet after laying down bet after bet against a table full of scurrying creatures, but without rhyme or reason. They seem seem to pass, and you grow thin and haggard. The crown Forgotten in an ecstasy of gambling. The vision, a rather puritanical one at that, fades. Okay, well, let's not bet then. The rattle of dice and grumble of betting comes from a side chamber. Okay, so we got the red run over there. Let's not... Let's not go there. Was that... Was that the, uh... So, scurrying creatures. Yeah, don't, don't go to the rat den. Don't, don't roll, go over there. That's a bad idea. Thank you for, for telling me. Uh, so we got the hall or the dice chamber. I could go to the dice chamber. Let's do that. You walk over into a long room set in a wooden t uh, with a wooden table on which several games of swindle stones are being played. You find a monk who grins at you. Fancy a game, brother? He asks. We stake ten gold pieces in Effa's honor. Oh, sure. Let's play. And it's the monk. The monk counts out three dice each and takes a, uh, the first bead. Does he really take the first bead? He does. By F.A., he says, I have noticed the guards seem most agitated, brother. Uh, do they? Well, he has one, two. I have two ones over here. If he doesn't have a one, which he might not have one. Well, if he bets two twos, I'm gonna, yeah. Anyway, I have noticed, yeah, about that, about the, the guards and all that. I hear there is an assassin in the CD. Okay, I'm gonna call that. I must keep an, my eyes open, clearly. Yeah. That was a lose. That was a loss. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it's way harder now, but uh, I had to start. Yeah, I'll start with a... Uh, I'll start with, the, with a three. You seem more open than most I meet in Mampang. You mean I have a loose tongue? The guards will no doubt cut it out? Uh, yeah, I have a loose tongue. The guards, the guards will no doubt cut it out. Okay, so he has... He must have two of those. I'm gonna call again. He cannot. Come on. Frickin' hell! <laughs> oh, I'm getting angry already. No, I'm not. Um, or not too much, anyway. I have seen you before, brother. You are here. Uh, you are new here? Well, he's gonna call. Uh, he's... Uh, well, he can't have that again. Come on. Oh. There it is. We lost the game. Doesn't matter. And there it is. 
Only one, three, the game, the monk, there it is. Um, another? Oh, sure. Um, let's increase the stake a little. The monk nods. How much? 20 gold more. Hell yeah. Let's make our money back, hopefully. We can't go back, so this is this, this can go very badly. Very, very badly. But we know him a little bit better. So what that means is that he has two fives. So what I'll bet, and actually, this is actually a very good bet, uh, what I'll do is, oh, not fives, I, I see that, I see fives, I mean, I mean four, of course. What I'll bet is I'll bet that, and he's not gonna call, because I have three after all, so he's gonna say that. Which, of course, is not the case, or at least I think I, it, is, it is not the case. He would have to have, like, it's a 5% chance for him to get that, of course, uh, it's more, more like a, uh, actually, 25 of 25, it's a 5% chance that he had that, I think. And he doesn't have that, ooh, yeah. Overbidding, monsieur, although he didn't have a hand. Yeah, well, that's that's what you get. That's what you get. I, I I lulled them into a false sense of security. So what I'll do here is I'll uh, how, why did you become a monk? Let's ask that. No, I'll go with that. Simple enough. The thought of playing dice to end of to the end of my days was most appealing. Oh, okay. So he's asking. So I bet one two, and he must have two of those, two of f fours. But he's overbeating. Is he overbeating? I am gonna call three. Perhaps, uh, so, yeah. Perhaps I can make an ex the experience more unpleasant. I'm gonna go with that. And he's not gonna believe me. Please don't believe me. Ah, he didn't believe me. He's an idiot. Unless he doesn't have any, any, any of those. Yeah, he had to. Look at that. Look at that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that was that was gonna be my loss right there because he was gonna bet that and I was gonna call. So he was. He's stupid. He's stu he's, he fell for my bluff. By FA, he says, let me see, so one. Oh, you have one. Well, that's a shame, because I have another one. Unless he's lying, of course. But no, that's not that, otherwise I would have gone for that. Nope. You've gone too high. And there it is. I gained the money, a lot of money. You want to play again? Huh. Can I raise the stakes even more? That'll be an interesting thing. Do you guys think I should? No. I'm gonna play again, just once more, and uh, hopefully I won't lose. And if I do, well, I'll walk away. Uh, I think, hopefully. I don't know. It's the game. The game. I don't know how many... If, uh, ooh. Okay, so you definitely don't... You definitely don't have three of three ones. So I'm, he's either gonna call that or he's gonna lose. You don't have three ones. Come on, you can't have three ones. That's, that's too good of a hand for... It is. Oh, come on! <sighs> okay, let's stay calm. Stay calm. It's not. It's not about calmness. It's about ju judging any falls for the bluff. So okay. Oh, that's that's an easy one then. I, I say that, and he's gonna. Oh boy. I can bring this back. I can bring this back. I think I can bring this back. I know how he plays. He's the first one to go, so he's gonna either have that, and uh, he doesn't have that. He does, of course he does. Mm. <sighs> well, let's play again. Let's play again. See, see if I can win this back. Get back, get back to that point. And that's how you lose your money, by the way, guys. That's how you lose your money. You either admit defeat at the beginning or. Okay, so he's got... That was a very good hand. See, luck is on my side. That was a very good hand right there, because he believes. I'm gonna ask him... I'm gonna ask... Yeah, I'm gonna say that. My turn then. I'm gonna go with that, but I don't have any threes. Of course, he doesn't know that. He thinks I have one. Oh. Is he learning? The son of a... Snake? Seriously? What a turn of events right there. Holy crap. Okay, so he has that. I'm gonna call again. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna say three, and he doesn't have another one. He calls. So he's he overbidding right now. He can't be. He, he isn't. He isn't. Okay. Okay. He's playing it. He's playing a different strategy, though. Oh, I got a good hand here. I got a good hand. Okay, so I'm gonna make him call me again. Man, who the hell is that guy that is having way too much fun with this? Maybe it's me. I, I sometimes do voices like that as well. It's kind of weird. Um. And there it is. I knew he was, was going to have one. He's going to be the first one to go, so that gives me the advantage in this particular thing. Unless he's bluffing. Oh, I am the first one to go. Unless he's bluffing. So I'm going to say I have this, and hopefully he has the same, and I'm just going to call. Oh, sir. 
Oh, that actually isn't that good. Yeah. Oh my god. He goes first. He goes first now, so he has the advantage. Oh. Oh no. Ha! Huh? I win because I got the upper one. Oh, that's right. This is weird. I win. Oh, unless he calls, which he doesn't. Yeah. No, sir. No, sir. I won. Ah, that was a good one. That was a good one. Okay, let's get out of here. I think I basically got a little bit of money there, but uh, yeah. Okay, you probably can make a bunch of money here, but yeah. You can, do, yeah. So, an expensive time, the monk declares. How does another sound? Well, no, thank you. The monk nods. True luck next, not f does. True luck does not always favor play, he agrees. You get up from the long table, the monk bidding you goodbye. You return to the courtyard. Okay. Actually, uh, he, it probably wasn't that bad for him anyway. He didn't lose that much money and he spent much, a bunch of time doing things. So let's go over here to the hall and see what happens. You walk deeper into the cool of the monastery. It is much quieter in here. Your footsteps echo on the cold stone floor as you emerge into a wide hall. Pew line one si pews, pews line one side, and an altar is in the corner. You pause for a while to listen to the singing. It is a strange tune, restless, sometimes harmonious, but at other times horrifically atonal. It is as though all the singers are singing their own songs, letting them coincide or conflict as luck would have it. The effect is rather unpleasing and not especially pleasant. Okay, I'm not gonna, should I rest a while? I probably shouldn't. Let's move on. You could explore the monastery further or return to the streets. Yeah, I'm gonna go and explore. You move closer to the altar and the pews. Some kind of service is going on. Mon monks are clustering in groups, chanting in a slurring monotone. A monk is in bright red robes. The abbot stands with arms outstretched. Let's watch the service. You stand and watch the service. The chanting is odd, a droning buzz lacking discernible phrases. You catch snatches of what might be words, but they sound like a strange imitation of language. Some monks are jovial, whispering to each other and jostling, but others are solemn. I'm gonna cast the, uh, the, uh, rap. Is it rap? I think, or is it yes, or something? I think it is rap for speak all, uh, all languages. Yeah. Talking, uh, so during the week, under the influence of the spell, the words uh, from the choir chants translate themselves. They are meaningless murmurs, nonsense words repeated over and over. Left and right sing the choir, up and down, back and forth, dead and alive, lucky and unlucky, and so forth, over and over. You take off the wig, having learned nothing. The abbot, his bright habit distinguishing him, stands placidly at the front of the room. The altar near him is covered in bronze, its top battered and pitted. Atop is a small bowl and a set of metal dice. The chanting peters out, or peters out, and the abbot smiles. Brothers and sisters, the abbot declares, we give thanks to Efe. We meditate on the changes and chances that fill our lives. We give ourselves over to the dice roll, to the risk, and let her nudge and see, uh, and she, as she see fit. He gestures to a monk who approaches the altar. Sister, it is your day to roll. A monk approaches, grasps uh, the dice, and then tosses them across the altar with a clang. The abbot considers the dice and tuts. No luck for you. Half rations for the day. Think upon this chance. There is a long stretch of chanting, and then the service comes to an end. The, monk, the monks file out towards the gardens or linger uh, by the altar. The echoes die away. The monk stands and files away. Okay. Well, the monks stand and file away, I mean. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> let's move on, let's get out of here, and that was the monastery. It's quite a weird place, but uh, I guess um, I, gu I guess it's a, it's a place of, of playing. Now playing a little bit of, of things, but I'm not going to go there. Not going to go there. Uh, you make your way down the steps out of the monastery and out to the road. Okay, you step out the, of the calm oasis of the monastery and back into the dust and gray of Mampang. The road stretches a short way in both directions. And we're going back over there. I don't know what time it is of the day, but it's a very gray and dull um, day. The sun has reached its highest point. There it is. Uh, one, uh, okay, so we got the woman over here. Let's go to the beggar and see what she has to say. You walk over to the well where an old woman, little more than a bundle of rags, sit, the, sits. She does not look at you as you approach. Her face is obscured by a shapeless hood. She rarely acknowledges anyone, not even holding out her hand for alms. You peer down into the well. Jump, if you like, the old woman remarks. There's no bottom to it. No bottom? You ask. None at all, she replies. No water either. Just a great big hole. This place was built by sorcerers, you know. Uh... 
Let's drop a coin. You drop a coin into the well, it falls, and there is no splash. Told you so, the woman remarks. Well met, you declare. Oh, there she is. She is, uh, <clears throat> oh boy, a little bit scary. Anyway, her voice, <clears throat> when she speaks, is raspy. Barely above a whisper, and her eyes, when they meet yours, are smooth, glossy black. There you are, brother. Found you now. Spare an old, uh, an old blind woman a coin? Enough to buy a crust of red, perhaps? Yeah, I think so. Why not? Uh, well, there's a bunch of reasons why not, but yeah, you toss a gold coin into her lap and she rocks back and forth, grinning. Oh, love, you have made Javin a happier woman. Bless you for helping me leave out my last days. She pauses to test the coin between her teeth, then nods. Now, love, anything else for an old blind woman? Uh, who are you? Well, now, my love, most call me Hurgfilr. Oh, boy. But you can call me Javin. It's, prettier na it's a prettier name. Tell me what happened to your eyes. Well, you don't waste time with pleasantries, do you? She replies. But I'll tell you my tale. I was called out, uh, called on by the Archmage himself to examine one of his creations. The Archmage makes creatures, you see, of all mixtures and kinds. This one was a muckasy, slimy sort of thing called a mucalytic. A uh, miserable thing, born totally without fear. They are almost deaf and speak only in a whisper. Sounds a most formidable beast. Not formidable, but deadly all the same. I got too close, so close that it attacked, and that was that. I lost my eyes to it. How exactly? The breath, Javin says. I got up close to take a look, and its poison breath blinded me. A monk told me I was lucky that, I, that all I lost. That was all I lost, but I don't know. I just can't see it that way. She chuckles at her joke. Are you now a... Uh, and now you're a beggar? I was a healer before, but now... Yes, now I beg. I sit here every day with little to pass time... But uh, the tormenting I receive from the Sight Masters. Sight Masters? Here in Mampang? Surely she is mistaken. Sight Masters in Mampang? Oh, indeed, my lovely. M indeed, she spits. Those bug eyed monsters delight in my suffering. One, lack li one lacking sight is a source of much curiosity to them. Half of them want to kill me, and half of them are in love with me. And those halves aren't entirely separate halves. Goddess gives me. Give me forgive m me my mouth, foul mouth. Hmm. Uh, so the ones, <clears throat> the one, sorry, <clears throat> the side masters from my homeland were honorable. Ah, uh, these may be outcasts. Then it is hard to say. She yawns with such vigor that she throws a cascade of spittle onto your shoulder. Oh boy, what a lovely chat, Javin says. I so rarely get to talk these days, love. Come back any time, she grins. Especially if you slay one of the side masters. And she draws a line across her throat. I have killed a side master. She peers at you. You're a silver-tongued one, aren't you? Know all the right things to say, but it's no good. I'm not stupid. I got sight. You leave the woman huddled by the well. So she's a sight master as well, right? Hmm. I thought I had killed one. No, I didn't actually kill the guy that, uh, no, I let him to die. He killed himself, yeah. You return to the west side of the square. Javina appears to go back to sleep. A water roll leads west, and yeah, let's go... So we have over here the market itself, which I believe is where I came from, but apparently that I can go back there. Uh, so carry, but it still bustles with life. The market is not as large. Yeah, okay. So from here, I got the tents, I got the stalls, and I got the square. So not exactly the same place I was at, but let's go to the tents and the stalls after that. Oh, there's more. Huh. There are a few large tents set up and some stone buildings too. There is a hawker loudly proclaiming that mi proclaiming that mysteries and wonders await in this tent. In the cor in one corner, a long line of creatures queue outside a low stone building. Okay, so let's go. The hawker, the fortune teller, and the stalls. Let's go to the uh, hawker first, and then over there because that's probably food. You he you hear those sounds? That sounds to me like a food place or something. You walk by the hawker who is plying her trade to the crowd. Examine the wondrous stone of secrets, she cries. Marvel as it speaks, advises, and prophesizes. You approach the hawker who points right at you. Now here is a discerning patron of the weird and wonderful. Will he enter and experience the mysteries that even our best magical knowledge cannot explain? Um, where are you from, you ask. I'm a proud daughter of the 8th slum, she replies, but they say my family were once great travelers and traders, crossing the wall of the old world. Can you imagine such a journey? Well, indeed I can. She nods. Of course, I could tell from the moment I saw you. You are the type to accept adventures such as this one. She taps the stone beside her meaningfully. What is it? 
She pulls herself up, puffs herself up. The Stone of Secrets is an incredibly rare artifact, discovered deep within a lost cave many moons ago. It is the only stone in the world which can speak. It is not powered by magic, but a strange alien force unique in the old world. The greatest magicians of our age have examined it and walked away confounded. How much? You may enter for the astoundingly small sum of two gold pieces. What a bargain! What a steal! Only two, yes, two gold pieces for an entertaining, enlightening, life-changing experience. Okay, let's do that. You pay the fee and the hawker beams, her gaze already slipping past you. Here is a brave soul who has chosen to embrace mystery and wonder, she says. Who will follow him? Well, hopefully a lot of people, because if you kill me like the guys that Troll was trying to sell me, Moth, carpets, that, that, that's not good. Inside the tent, it is demon cramped. A large stack of boxes sits to one side, a cloth draped over them. Other curiosities, not, no doubt, but that, that the ochre has shelved in favor of more profitable stone. Of the more profitable stone. Let's, uh... Look at the stone first. The stone of secret sits on a table in the center of the tent. It is unremarkable, a dirty rock that you could easily carry with one hand. And yet, as you approach, the sun begins to wobble back and forth on its stand. Another voice booms through the tent. Analander! A familiar voice. The voice is familiar, but quite impossible. It is the booming voice, the booming tone of, the, of Shadrach, the hermit from the backlands. It is surely a trap. It must be a trap, no doubt designed to lure Analander into revealing himself. You lift the rock and turn it over. Enough of that, grumbles Shadrach, or at least his voice. Do not treat me like a tortoise. I do not know who you, who you are. You do not recognize me? It is I, Shadrach, the hermit of the, hermit of the wastes. It has been a long, long time since we met, Analander. And have you come f and have you come far? Oh, this is not a trick. I don't think this is a trap. I think what happens is, basically, I met him in the past, and he's been trapped in a rock somehow. Shadrach, is that really you? You murmur fearfully. It is indeed, and it is good to see you again. Are you safe? I'm dying. There is a comfort in that, otherwise I'm a rock. What happened? What about your body? Where is it? My body has long since withered away. I'm now very old, very old indeed. Can I aid you? Oh, uh, no. It is best you put me out of your mind. You, your own task is all that matters. The rock rotates ever so slightly on its base. But how can I aid you? How goes your journey? I see serpents did not eat you. Well... <sighs> well, we'll go through all these stuff, I suppose, next episode, because we're out of time for right now. So, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been, well, a very, very old friend. <laughs> We met a very old friend, but not to us. To him, I'm sure, but not to us. Anyway, uh, as I said, this uh, this has been Sorcery. I am Colonel RPG, and I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.